We are here at the European Youth Media Days television uh, talk show. We have a distinguished guest who is uh, searching for the possibility for us, the humans, to explore uh, another planets in the solar system to live on. Uh, he is exploring that option to be the moon. Well, as you see, this is uh, uh, not Matt Damon who already explored uh, living on Mars, but I would like to introduce you, Mr. James Carpenter. Hi. Hello, Mr. Carpenter. Uh, you're a project scientist who is working um, of, as a part of the team who is um, developing missions to the moon as a part of the uh, Directorate of Human Spaceflight and Exploration in European Space Agency. Wow. That's correct, yes. <laughs> yes. And not Matt Damon, sorry. <laughs> what are the new frontiers of the human exploration? Okay, well, for, it's been a long time since humans went very far away. So there was the big thing with Apollo in the 1960s and 70s and humans landing on the moon. It's the only time humans have ever been to another solar system body. Um, but since then, we've been limited to what we call um, low Earth orbit, which is within about 500 kilometers of the surface of the Earth. And we now, on the International Space Station, have had an international crew living, working, operating there for many years now, um, doing some fantastic science and learning what it means to live off Earth. Now, we, as an international community, are thinking about what happens next. So, low Earth orbit has gone from being somewhere we explore to somewhere we go to work. And that's an extraordinary transition for us as a species, but now we're looking to take that further to the next places. And so the next destination for human exploration um, will be the surface of the moon, which is the, um, the closest celestial object to us. It's somewhere we can go to explore, to do science, and to learn what it means to live and work off-world, and to get ready for really what will be the, the next, the, the destination that everybody has as a long-term goal, which is the surface of Mars. Something which I think is really important is that space and space exploration has become a place where the nations of the world can unite to do amazing things together. So today, there is only one place I can think of where the United States, Europe, Canada, Japan, and Russia are working together in complete harmony, doing extraordinary, amazing, and complicated things and that is the space station. What is your opinion about space tourism and traveling in space for commercial purposes? And human space tourism is something which is coming. It does in fact exist already. If you have enough money, you can go to the space station for, uh, for two weeks, so you can already do this. Mm -hmm. um, but I think that there is a, with companies like uh, Virgin Galactic and, um, and others, um, you are seeing an a growth in that industry and uh, I'm very excited about what might come from that. Here at DI we uh, have spoken with different participants and uh, we, we have asked them what will they do if they are left alone on uh, another planet. in a big house uh, in another planet and I would hope that it wouldn't be very expensive because it's another planet so why not? I suppose if I'll be one of the only tenants of a new planet there will be plenty of space so a house definitely. Can you even have a yard in this space if it's... I don't want to live outside in the Mars, I don't like that. Uh, yeah, zero gravity, that would be fun. <laughs> Do you want to try some space food? We have uh, some space strawberries and feel what it tastes like to eat some food when you're on the space or on another planet. <laughs> Why not? <laughs> yeah. Okay. Here are. Thanks. Thank you. It looks like a sponge. Yeah. Sponge. <laughs> what it tastes like? Um, strawberry. But with a lot of sugar. Yeah. A lot. <laughs> mm. But it's nice, I guess, for mm. space food. It's strawberries, but it's very dry. Then maybe I won't have to bring my own chocolate, because this one will be good. What it tastes like? Really good. It's crispy. I mean, it tastes like chocolate, but it doesn't taste like ice cream at all. <laughs> well. 
It's the case that if you're really stuck, you have to eat anything, isn't it? <laughs> but it's not bad, I suppose. So we can try to... That sounds delicious. <laughs> yeah. I think so. We'll try for our distinguished taste. They look like bananas okay. and I'll give a try. Okay. It's, you're sure it's safe? Okay. Yeah, it's quite good actually, yeah. It's, it's almost like banana. Well, mm. it has the yellow color. Mm -hmm. So, yeah, so um, I, I'm not sure if any astronauts have ever eaten this in space, um, but if space food is like this, then I, I think I'll stay here. So we have spoken with Mr. James Carpenter to realize what is the future of space, space traveling, space tourism, and of course, of the taste of the space food. Thank you, Mr. Carpenter.